Hey, Drew? Um, I'll just say, uh, I brought up in the last session as well, um, that the creation of classes and courses on the undergraduate level, and I think undergraduate is the right spot because, again, the internet is just so important for everyone. And um, so the younger you can get people educated on internet governance, um, the, the better. And also, at my university specifically, we had groups of students, not just tied to one class, but groups of students go to the regional IGF um, and participate um, in a lot of the sessions and interact. So I think bringing you know, student groups to things like regional IGF and even the global IGF is, is a good idea. I'm sitting here thinking a little bit about um, this whole, uh, ri the rise of the term internet governance. Um, and I'm thinking about other media that have been, uh, were invented before internet, things like tele telephony or uh, telegraphy even to go even farther back or radio and television. And I'm trying to imagine the, a conference like this talking about radio governance. Now, I understand about allocation of frequencies, and there's a big conference that's sponsored by the ITU about who gets to radiate in what frequency. So that governance part, I understand. But you know, I, public involvement in that tends to be pretty small. Uh, can you imagine having a discussion about this with regard to television? Uh, is there a big issue about access to television? Um, and there are some issues in the United States, for example, questions about who gets to be in the television uh, transmission business and under what rules. But the general public doesn't often participate in the way that we're seeing here. So what is it about the internet that makes us feel like we have to have something to say about governance and to involve so many different stakeholders? Is, what, what is, is it because it's not a one-way medium? or just a two-way medium, it's a, it's a medium that allows multiple parties to interact with multiple parties. It's a medium that allows us to literally um, transmit every form of communication that's ever been invented. Text, audio, video, combinations thereof, interactive programs. It, it, there must be something, I'm interested to know what you think. What is it? that's making us feel like we have to do something about internet governance, but that we don't feel, or don't apparently feel, about the telephone or the television or the radio. I wonder if anybody in the audience, yes, wants to respond to this question, actually. Yes, please, I'll give you this mic. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fiona Asonga. I run the Telecommunication Service Providers Association of Kenya. Before I answer Vincent's question, I had input for the earlier question raised by Mark Tim. In Kenya, I know that there is a university of technology called the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. It is, <coughs> it is a leading uh, university when it comes to ICT training. And they have a program called uh, Bachelor Degrees in Business for Information Technology. One of the modules in that program is law. And in the law course, they study policies and laws that have been uh, formed around ICTs, the internet, and use of telecommunications. So yes, there is a way in which, in response to Makutin, there is a way in which uh, the universities are trying to bring in governance issues and policy development into the, the technology program. That is one example. I know there are many others, but I don't have the statistics. Then in response to Vinsaf's question, why are we paying more attention to the internet than to telephones or the fax machines or uh, previous communications uh, uh, devices that we have had or, or facilities we've had in the past. I think partly because the, with the internet, there was much more uh, integration of services, of activities, and it's touching on lives in a more 
greater impact than the telephone did. For example, in Kenya, prior to 2000, when we had the mobile phone, there were only about 200,000 phone users. With the mobile phone, we have close to 20 million telephone subscribers, just mobile phone subscribers. What that means is there's a change also in our behavior as consumers, in the way we adapt the technology. Most Kenyans receive internet via their phones because the enhanced phone is easier to buy and cheaper to access than a laptop. The cost of the laptop in comparison to the phone, there's a big difference. I can get a phone with internet for, for example, 6,000 Kenyan shillings or 5,000 Kenyan shillings, but to get a laptop, I'd have to have about minimum of about 25,000 Kenyan shillings. That's like five times the price difference. So the phone is easier to get, and it's easier to get internet on the phone and to do a lot of things on the net via the phone. The concern about the internet is that if I have internet on my phone and I'm putting a lot of my public information on the phone and via the phone and also receiving e-government services via the phone, then there is concern. First of all, because of the amount of data we are now putting onto that network. Secondly, the type of data we put onto that network and the kind of transactions that have to be handled on that network. We have, in parts of this world, economies that are running on the internet and some environments that are completely paperless. And that raises concern and that is why we have to sit here and discuss governance issues because we need to continually develop standards that tie into how we manage this internet resource because it's now a resource we can't avoid, we can't ignore, and we have to live with. Thank you. <coughs>